I love it. Look looking. at that. I love well, it. Well, hell, I want to look good. You I, do. I don't chew my right. face down. I'm, got, I'm face. asking. Low mileage, one owner. Uh, cheap, cheap, cheap. Uh, home. Fifteen bucks. Perfect. Hey guys, it's John Wool with Appalachian Homes, People, and Places, and I'm back here at Good Junk Cheap. You have seen this place on several of my videos, one with Ricky where he painted the doors, and this is the junk man himself. He's become famous here on the 127 World's Longest Yard Sale. He came here many years ago because he loves selling stuff, and he bought property, and he moved here, and he's built a whole village here, a tiny village. He's got different places he's built over the years, and some of them he sold off, and Anything that he's got, he says for sale. So he's ready to sell the, the junk business, the tiny homes, anything you're interested in. Take a few minutes, watch this video. Perry's going to take us through and show us some things. Tell us about this right here, what you built. This is a, a nice looking sign that you've, uh, I call it Appalachian uh, folk art. Ricky called it Frankenstein because it was made out of pieces and parts. He says Frankenstein was made out of pieces and parts. Like we made this out of a refrigerator door, a Volkswagen deck lid, a cooler top. 57 Plymouth hubcap and water skis and you put it all together then Ricky does his artwork on it Yeah, and it kind of tells about the whole business here good junk cheap. Yes, and Ricky uh, uh, his video was uh, Very popular if you're not seen it. It shows Ricky painting these old doors right here that uh, Perry goes out and buys And we're gonna see some more of them in a little bit that he's went out and he had to go out and buy up some more doors for Ricky to To paint and uh, let's walk around here to the front look at the general store. I love old general stores and so this is the little general store he's built, and uh, so tell us a little bit about it there. Well, it's built to look like an old-time gas station with a gas canopy. Uh, there's an attendant inside. He's made out of cardboard and paper mache, but it's basically an old-time gas station looking piece. And uh, I let Ricky paint his uh, doors and signs up under it uh, during the yard sale every year. And he, he takes front row center, and he's a, he's, a, he's a good fella, and he does a nice job for all the people. Yes, and uh, you had people all the way when I was here. You had people all the California. way from California out here. Yep, yep. those buying. people. Yep, those people bought I think uh, four doors I think from Ricky this year. And then of course after the uh, yard sale with his video, uh, some other people from Alabama ordered six doors, and he's already produced those and got them to the people in Alabama. You can see some of these doors that uh, Ricky painted on the video with Ricky there and I'll try to put a link in the top there so you can watch that full video but uh, he just sits right out here underneath the front porch and he just paints them by hand don't he? Correct. And uh, you yep. met him what 20 years ago or so? Oh at least 20. Yeah, probably the first year I did the yard sale in the year 2000. Yeah. yeah, and so he, 20, 22 years ago. You, uh, you've you got a lot of unique signs around here that we'll see. There's one of them up here that Ricky painted that the wind kind of got, the Texaco sign, and uh, wind blowed it around a little bit, but he can reproduce about anything, can he? Correct, yeah. You give him uh, something to paint on, and you give him the idea, and he'll uh, he'll go right to it, and he can, he, can, he can reproduce it. Let's go around here and look at your uh, trophy wife. All right. Uh. So this is what you call your trophy wife. You said you made this about 20 years ago? Yeah, this is just uh, what you call outsider folk art. Down in Sanford, Florida, once a month they have an Alive After Five event. And the five sidewalk fills up with people, artists, and just people selling everything. And I made this one year uh, just out of, uh, to have some laughs. And we put it out in front of a, a friend of mine's studio. And uh, a lot of people commented on it and had a good time. All the women bumped their husbands and said, honey, there's your trophy wife. <laughs> there you go, and had her ever since, haven't you? She, oh yeah. yeah. No, don't complain, yeah. does she? No, don't say a word. <laughs> so you owned this property over here at one time and sold it. Correct. Uh, yeah, that was the main junk store. Uh, had that built that in two thousand six, seven. First year I opened up was two thousand and eight, uh, and we worked out of there until a couple of years ago. Then I decided to start downsizing. I sold the big building there and a vacant lot and then I concentrate on this side where I've still got five lots over here and a lot of road frontage out on Highway 127. Yeah, let's go around here and show them your uh, your junk store and a few things around this way. He's got some interesting uh, collections in here that he's kept over the years and we'll look at a few of those things. Uh, right here's something he built, I uh, forgot about this, uh, his grandpa's Model A, tell us about that. Well, built that for my grandpappy who uh, lived with me down in Florida. It was my mother's dad. Uh, brought him to Florida in probably 1980, and he didn't pass away until 1985. But I think it was 1981, We, uh, me and some friends of mine, we 
built this and uh, well I built it and we all carried it in the house on grandpappy's birthday and that was uh, pretty exciting for him the, the car itself is built on that backdrop panel and uh, that's the panel we carried into the house and uh, it's 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 a conversation piece and grandpappy really liked it because then he still had his model a car there in the front room with him at the house until he passed away that's my see the world before you leave it trailer uh if i go on the road and i want to buy some uh, junk here and there travel to indiana or whatever i would take this with me and uh buy small stuff and hopefully fill the trailer have a good time make some memories and uh, come home with a load of junk for the junk store these are all plates that I've run since I've been here in Tennessee, uh, personalized plates that I ran over the years. Uh, and on the other side is uh, quite a few more that there again, I ran all of these over the years here in Tennessee. Been here since about 2004, full time. And uh, the front of it is just kind of where I started in Illinois, spent a lot of years in Florida, a little bit of time in Wyoming. Now I'm in Tennessee, but the main idea is Never quit. Never keep, quit. Keep going. Oh, yeah, you got a lot of signs around here. Ricky's painted signs for years, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. I've known him since uh, the year 2000. 2000. Yeah, yeah. 22 years. So Good this uh, this building originally over here where you started, and you just sold this property. Correct. Did you put the pond in down here? It's a beautiful pond. Yeah, we, uh, we just pulled those in, in a couple winters ago. The lumberjacks, they lumberjacked out the back, took all the big trees and everything. And in exchange for the trees, they dug the pond for me and we shaped all that up and everything. Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. You did a good job there. It was always my vision to have a, a pond behind the store and uh, little cabins out back. So this is the, the main store where you've got some of the most unique stuff. And one of the things we was talking about earlier was the canoe. Uh, we was talking about what was the greatest thing you ever found on a find. It was and on trash day uh, in Florida, in Sanford, Florida. Probably uh, 15 years ago now, maybe not quite that long ago, but it was a uh, canoe. It was in eight pieces. Uh, it was in two duffel bags, and it was made to for a fisherman to take on a float plane. Once the float plane landed, he would then go ashore, put the canoe together, and go fishing. And when he got done with his day, he would come back to shore, take the canoe apart, put it back in the duffel bags, get on the float plane, and go home. And it's called a, a, a link, L-I-N-K, a link canoe, because the man's last name was Link. But uh, I ended up selling it uh, to the city of Tavares because they were opening up a float plane ride where they give rides to people on float planes. And uh, they put it in that building on top of the cooler. So I always, I sold it very cheap, but I can always go back and visit it. Uh, yeah, city well, Tavares. you said you sold it cheap and you gave them a good deal on it, but tell them uh, you got it for free. Correct. Because it was on the side of the road to be picked up. And we got right. some pictures of it right here, I believe. Right. And you've even kept a copy of the uh, bottom of the check right here. Um, Payment check from the city of Tavares, it was $500. But at the time, a lot of people said that canoe was worth two to 3000 But I was happy with 500 because, of course, I gave zero. And here's some pictures of the uh, canoe put together. And uh, you said you put that canoe together yourself. It was easy to put together. And it looks like it was just about in... Uh, Correct. Uh, Mr. Pete and I put that together on a Saturday morning. It was an old friend from the flea market, and uh, it was all right there. It was clean, and we just screwed it together. It had little uh, thumb bolts. You, it was, a, a third grader could have put it together. It was very simple. So this is a, this is probably one of the most valuable items you've ever found that somebody just threw in the garbage to throw oh, away. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. definitely yeah. That was a lot of fun. I mean, that's like going uh, gold mining. I mean, you're going out on trash day today. You never know what you're going to find. And it's always fun. <laughs> If you're really into it. Well, right here's something I saw that we were, I was asking you about that you've got up here that I was kind of amazed about. Uh, you've got a car seat. You says it's your car seat as a kid. Uh, I've never seen one like that. You was born in 1951. That is correct. So, uh, people always ask me how long have I been a junk man? And I, I had that, I made that years ago and I hung it up in the rafters in the other store. And I always told them since 1951, and that is actually my original car seat uh, that I rode in as a kid. Uh, that would have been over the back of my mom and dad's brand new Buick, probably. Um, and I was uh, the youngest of about eight or ten nieces and nephews. I was the youngest, so that car seat probably went to some of my older nieces and nephews through the years, too, before it finally got down to me. But that, that is a car seat where they hooked it over the back of the seat, 
And then if they wanted to take you out and haul you into the house, they just carried the whole seat. And it has, it's got feet on the bottom of it, so you could set it on a tabletop or whatever. But, yep, I've been a junk man since 1951. Well, you've become quite famous at it. I noticed when I was here before, there was people wanting their picture made with you or of you or different things. So, you know, it's uh, the 127 uh, yard sale, world's longest yard sale, has become quite a cult thing, I guess, where people just really love yeah. coming. And Every year. I mean, there's people who say it's going to die, but it will never die. Uh, people always want to get out and have an adventure and uh, go find something. Uh, and every year, it'll keep going forever. This is my 23rd year. First year was 2000. I found some great stuff. The first couple of years I was out there running the roads and selling also, but uh, it, there's always stuff out there if you go out there and look for it. Well, tell us about that sign. They can find you when they're going down the 127 here, highway into Jamestown. They'll notice the big fish sign. Tell us the story. Just tell me about that early. Tell us that story. The you big know? fish came from Hammond, Indiana. Uh, I was on top of a four story building. L Fish Furniture, and as a little kid, I can remember seeing that sign up on top of that building. As I got older and into collecting old memorabilia, I was lucky enough to get that sign in the year, I think, 2001. The neighborhood went down in Hammond uh, as far as businesses, and the Baptist Church in that area, State Street, was buying up all the buildings. They bought up the L Fish Furniture building, and they had taken the sign down, and they took it around back of the building and it was cutting it up for scrap. Well, I got there just in time and I gave the janitor of the church $20 that they was going to give to the guys cutting it up for scrap. And then I took the sign and uh, got a guy from right down the road, state auto body. He loaded the sign onto a 99 Ford pickup truck I was driving at the time. I strapped it down with a couple of semi straps and drove it down here to Tennessee. Paid twenty dollars for it, twenty dollars to load it. Probably the best forty bucks I've ever spent in my life. And the, it's fifteen feet long, two sided, neon porcelain over steel, old time sign. And you bought the truck also for a reasonable price, you said. Yeah, from a local guy here, Austin Schult. He was retiring, uh, four hundred dollars for the old Dodge truck. But I knew when I saw the color of the truck, the green and the sign, I said that's the perfect truck to put the sign on, which I put it on. Probably in the year 2000, we set it in there with a uh, septic tank delivery rig, set it in the back of the truck, and I welded it all to the frame of the truck. So it's, it's there to stay. But every year I get at least 10 people wanting to buy that sign. They call, they see the phone number. But basically it, uh, it, it stays with me and the business. So if I buy the business, they could get the sign, though. You can have the fish when you buy the business, <laughs> correct. Uh, talking about business, let's look at this right here. I noticed that uh, you're showing me these... Uh, drawings that uh, Ricky's got available. You have these for sale here, but... Uh... Well, Ricky's done these over the years, and he's copied them, and he'll, he sells them at $20 a piece, and it's just some local stuff that he has uh, known from when he was a, a kid here in Jamestown, and this one here is taken off a uh, photograph. It was Gib Holt's Auto Sales, and uh, he's, he's drawn Gib Holt and also G.B. Holt, which I believe might have been Gib's son. I do not know them gentlemen but anyway this is just something that Ricky does he hand draws this pencil draws it here's another one that he did of Don Garlitz years ago and he copied these and he went to a car show up in Somerset Kentucky and he waited in line he met Don Garlitz he gave 50 of these to Don Garlitz and he kept 50 but they both autographed all of them there's supposed to be only a hundred of these and but this is stuff that Ricky has hand drawn over the years well, that's, uh, he does a fine job. Uh, we, uh, I noticed when I was here before, when, and uh, what the, uh, a lot of people's going to ask, and I know, that when does the market take place, and when will you be open again? 127, world's longest yard sale. It's, of course, on the Internet. Uh, it always starts officially with the first Thursday in August. But most people that are really into the business, they will set up the weekend previous. So you've pretty much got a nine-day run of yard sale buyers and sellers working all throughout this area and the whole sales route. Uh, first year I did it in 2000, it was 450 miles long, went from Gadsden, Alabama up to Cincinnati. Now they've increased the length on the northern end, it's 675 miles long. Always starts officially with the first Thursday in August.
Uh, yeah, so uh, the people always want to know when it is. On the last few videos I posted, that was one of the main questions they asked me. But when I was here before, I noticed you you were showing your uh, the trailer outside that you had the tags on, and here's some more tags that you've got in here. And one of these was your uh, personal tag, I believe. That you got one from somebody, then you had this. Well, one. some of my customers years ago gave me the one on the top. I sell it. I thought that's kind of cute, and I actually went and got that plate from the state of Tennessee, and I ran it for the year 2015. And um, it was it was a fun tag to run because everybody always asked you, you know, what do you sell? And well, I'm a junk man, so I sell junk. So it was a, it was a memorable tag. Uh, one of the best tags that I've got locally here came from a local guy years ago. He brought it to me probably the second year I was set up. The one on top is a 1951 Tennessee tag, and that's the most sought after Tennessee. They call it a state shaped tag because it's shaped like the state of Tennessee. Um, 72 was Fentress County and that one's number 20 and the last uh, city uh, county clerk we had here, Marilyn, she took a picture of that tag and then they put it on her return envelopes. Uh, Marilyn Stevens, 72-20, that tag was on all those envelopes but uh, that's a tag that was brought to me by an old timer who lived out on the park road. A uh, nice old guy and his wife, uh, James and Flo Watson long time ago and uh, you've got so many things here that's just uh, interesting story like this uh, suitcase uh, you talked about the old bags wanted sign that you had when we was here before right. I got a picture of that and it said uh, right. old bags wanted and so you were wanting to buy suitcases at the right. time and in Florida at the flea market years ago I had a suitcase painted up and on the suitcase it said old bags wanted and so people would bring in old suitcase and some of them were just junk some of them I would buy because they're very collectible. People use them uh, for storage and decor. So anyway, one, one weekend a guy comes up. He says, I've got an old suitcase. I live in Leesburg, not far away. So that afternoon I go to his place. I see the suitcase. He brings this out. And this is a metal suitcase, kind of unusual. He wanted 20 bucks for it. He said, but it's full of papers, and you can have all the papers too. He says, I don't care. Well, I opened it up, and the whole suitcase is filled with, I'm going to call them love letters, from a lady from Jamestown, Tennessee, right here where we are, to a fella in Muncie, Indiana, and I'm sure that they were boyfriend, girlfriend here, and he went to Muncie years ago to get work. Uh, I've never contacted the family. I should. A good friend of mine here locally tells me that the, the lady has passed away now, but uh, I should contact the family and just give these to them. But it was, it was bizarre that I'm in Florida, and looking for old suitcases and somebody says come on over to the house I got one and that suitcase was filled with love letters from the same town that I'm living in in Tennessee <laughs> Jamestown that's a great story yeah, yeah. I, I know there's some people look at there's a book in here that had some flowers in it uh, told what kind of flower it was cool. no just just some interesting like I say totally uh, the suitcase would have never made it back home to Jamestown, Tennessee, had it not been for my sign, Old Bags Wanted. <laughs> it's got some really cool old pictures. I, somebody could spend a few weeks just going through and, and reading the letters. So, yep. Oh, yeah. So yeah. is this a suitcase and all of its contents something you would sell? It goes with the business. It goes with the business. But so I might uh, get a hold of these people next week. You might, you might try it. to give it back to them instead yeah, of selling yeah. it. Okay. Look these ladies sitting on that's a cannon. See the big steel wheels? Oh, yeah, a cannon. How about that? It's a big one. Let's, uh, let's look at one more item right here, the uh, gas pump uh, while we're in here. This uh, kind of fooled me when I first saw it, walked up to it. It's got a little bit of uh, uh, different uh, material it's made out of than a regular gas pump. Well, everybody thinks it's a gas pump, but well, it is. It's a replica. A friend of mine in Florida, old Charlie, he carved that out of wood. He got a couple of Tokheim gas part, parts out of a to Tokheim pump, and he used them in there, of course, but... The whole box and everything, it's all made out of wood. So it's a replica. It's great for like an inside garage or display. You could go in a restaurant or whatever. It's uh, very, very unique. Okay, so what do you got in your case here, Perry? Well, two of the most interesting items. Uh, this trophy came from up in Lake County, Indiana. And on it, it says, Championship Lake County High School Track Meet, won by Hammond. May 12th, 1917. So this is a trophy that I bought years ago up in Whiting, Indiana. 
at a yearly yard sale. It's called Garage Mahal. It's always the Saturday after Mother's Day. Citywide yard sale. And everybody looks forward to it. Uh, and this is something I bought at one of the houses probably 15, maybe 20 years ago now. But it's, it's an old, old trophy, 1917. The other kind of cute thing in here is uh, the old Tonka bulldozer. And if you ever saw the movie A Christmas Story with little Ralphie and his BB gun, that movie is filmed, the story is written about Hammond, Indiana. And that plate glass window that Ralphie is looking through is Goldblatt's department store in downtown Hammond. Um, at the time, I mean, they had a meat market in the basement, and it was a full department store. It was uh, like an early super Walmart. But it was the, one of the mainstays in, in downtown Hammond for years and years. And maybe not this bulldozer, but one just like it I had when I was a kid. And I saw it in that store window, just where Ralphie sees everything he sees in that movie. <laughs> so as I see you got some antlers down there. You lots, lots of antlers and uh, Super Bowl books, uh, World Series books, some old records. Some of these are kind of cute because they're uh, from made in Nashville, Hickory Records in Nashville. Printed some of them back when, and just different stuff. Yo-yos. Uh, I got my old paddle ball over there, the flyback paddle ball that I won a contest with when I was 11 years old. I hit that little ball 1,150 times without missing, and I won a bicycle at 11 years old. Really? How about that? I've got that? the newspaper article to prove. You got made the newspaper and everything. So, That's right. Long so time do, you have, ago. do you have quite a few toys from your? Now was this a toy from your childhood or that was not mine but i had one just like I had one like it so yeah yes. I, I ended up with one tonka left that's all i survived yeah. my childhood I, I remember because tonka and it had the three position blade you know, up middle and there so you had three positions on the blade it was a three-way blade let's walk out in front of the building here and let people see you've got i think you said you got eight garages here or garage doors uh, well it's basically uh it's a uh yeah it's an eight-car garage, eight-car storage locker, whatever you want to call it. But for the sale, we put everything out in the parking lot uh, and stuff in the store also. But then winter time comes after the sale's over, you just put it all back away until next year and, and lock it down. Yeah, you had stuff everywhere. Uh, Correct. Yeah, if you looked at yeah. Ricky's video, you'd see the table back set in every August, place. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a lot, uh, it's a lot of merchandise, a lot of stuff. Let's go back. And like I say, this is mostly you just pack it in uh, after the sale's over and then you get it back out next year. But it's fun to go out and find stuff. Uh, here's an Orange County Chopper's bike, new in the box. It's probably 15 years old, but it's still new in the box, never been put together. And it's uh, I have more fun going out, finding places and finding items. You like going out, you're, you like buying, I guess, huh? Yeah, buying is as selling, much fun like, as selling. I, I like selling nine days a year. I'm only open nine days a year. Bunch of auto parts. I just bought like 10 tubbies full of old auto parts from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Oh, Still wow. Still in the boxes. Uh, they're, they're all labeled. Anyway, that was a fun find. Here's some uh, outboard motor covers. I just picked them up since the yard sale this year. Uh, People make them into birdhouses and just do all kind of stuff with them. Uh, collectors might even be looking for them to put their motors back together. I mean, they date from uh, that one Johnson is probably from 1957 or 58. Uh, SO sign, that came from right here in Jamestown. That, that came off of Ralph Cargyle's SO station. But when Ralph got done with SO, he painted over it white on the other side and put the name of his motel, Cargyle Motel, I think it said one mile. And he put it up on the road down there so people knew there was a motel ahead. But when we went to take the paint off the other side, I took the paint off and it found out that Ralph had taken a grinder and grinded the letters off before he primed it, painted it white, and made his sign. So he really did a good job as far as making his sign, but he really did a good job in destroying the sign. But we, uh, we restored it. Uh, got her all painted. I got a clear coat it yet with the uh, automotive clear coat before I hang it up. But uh, between Ricky and I, we, we painted her white, blue, and Ricky lettered her in red again. Ricky's uh, quite the artist.
Here's some more signs. You just everywhere you look, you find stuff. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Ricky probably. Uh, yeah, that was that point. was our that was our 23rd year this year. Uh, and this is just a sign he painted years ago. But I try to let people know how many years we've been here. There's a Springer front end off of a uh, a Harley like uh, you would see on uh, Easy Rider in the movie in 1969. It's an old overextended Springer with a spoolie wheel. Uh, but it's something I came up with at, with at a yard sale since the yard sale this year.